This is an update to my last video where I looked at the basic um, dual thief circuit which I've got here. I've transferred onto strip board. Uh, I've left this running for like over a day now just to just to see what it does. Um, but I've taken this circuit and I've made some more modifications on top of the modifications I made on, on that circuit and uh, I've got it on the breadboard here. Uh, and I'll go through the modifications and then I'll go through um, some values that I'm getting from from the circuit. So first of all I've got rather than 20 turns I've got uh, 40 turns on the first coil on, on here which goes to the collector and I've got five turns as I had on the last circuit which go to the the base of the um, of the transistor and I've got two germanium diodes uh, going into the coil from the positive supply that's so that the coil um, the coils only affect each other magnetically through magnetic fluxes rather than through electrically as well so because they they can't, can't go back up um, through the diodes and affect the affect the uh, the coils themselves um, and then the, the transistor is just basically the same uh, I've still got a diode which I've changed to a germanium diode now rather than a signal diode just for a bit more efficiency uh, and I've got the uh, the capacitor which um, does the smoothing of the signal still so it goes to a DC current still uh, but this is where I've made the major change for this video is uh, I've got a variable resistor and another transistor up here and what this does is it is connected to the output voltage so that the voltage coming out of the boost from the uh, from the inductor and the transistor the switching transistor uh, I've got um, a potential divider and I feed that into the base of this transistor and it switches on and off the signal we're going into this the base of this transistor so that when this gets this the, the output signal gets fully charged it can actually switch off the the, uh, the transistor um, which is actually generating the, the voltage so it shouldn't waste current so it actually stops um, the oscillations in this circuit and, and wasting current going straight down to ground because it can actually now when this capacitor this moving capacitor is charged up it can uh, switch off the circuit so I'll go through a few, a few of the things okay I'll just power this up so there it is and I've got two two LEDs powered from it um, but the signal, I'm going to take a look at a couple of signals. Um, the signal from the collector of the transistor. So as you can see, that's still a nice square wave. Which I'm getting there, so that's a good sign. Uh, and then the output voltage is still nice and smooth, but currently at 3.95 volts. Uh, but a very DC current again. Um, but what I want to do is uh, I want to disconnect the load, so I'll disconnect the earth from the load. And the voltage on the output goes up to 6.67 volts. And um, with a DVM I'll, I'll show how when the load is disconnected, because I, I don't know if you can hear, but the, uh, the inductor I've got actually makes a bit of a, a noise now when it's um, powering the circuit because um, I'm driving a lot more current for it uh, but when I disconnect the load you can hear that it stops squeaking which which is an indication that actually this transistor is actually switching off the circuit but I'll go through that with a, a multimeter and show how much current and voltage is is going through the circuit at each stage okay it's a bit more tricky now to uh, maneuver my way around uh, the circuit but what I'll do is I'll put it on um, on current um, measurement for my um, multimeter and first of all I'll show uh, the typical current coming from the battery uh, and because I've got the two diodes in the start of the circuit um, you don't get the noise on the battery anymore so you get um, you can measure actual um, current and voltage without having to worry about any any noise being present okay so that's measuring 26 milliamps when I'm driving the LEDs now if I disconnect the load it goes down to five milliamps so that's a lot more efficient than the circuit was before so now when you disconnect the load the transistor over here switches the switching transistor off and it drops down to five milliamps uh, that you're drawing i mean compared to a boost converter i've not really got much experience with boost converters i'm guessing it's probably still pretty inefficient but uh, for this circuit i'm very impressed with the with the result for that um i'll connect the uh, load up again 
that goes back up to uh, 26 milliamps. Okay, so I'll also measure the voltage across here uh, when I'm driving the load so that I can work out uh, the, from the battery how much power in milliwatts is uh, going into, into uh, the load. So, oops, it's going to be off screen a bit, but so the voltage, of course, says 1.28 volts. Um, I'll put up on the screen the results I got from last time I tested it. I, I won't use the results I'm taking whilst I'm doing this video, but the, um, I've got various results from measuring this. Because what I'll do now also is I'll t measure the voltage and current going through uh, the output. So I can do a comparison and see how efficient the circuit is at how much power is being lost in the conversion. Uh, so I'll just power that up and whilst it's on volts, I'll uh, try and measure the volts on the output. It's a bit tricky. Oops. Okay, so that is so that is uh, four point zero five volts on the output. And now I'll try and measure the current. Um, so I need to switch the meter to current and take the load off. I'll put this between between the load whilst trying to hold the battery as well. Um, hello. And the current is uh, 8.8 .8 milliamps. Uh, so I'll put up on the screen the results I got from when I did it before. Um, and so when it's idle, I got 5.1 milliamp consumption at 1.28 volts. So in idle, it's using 6.5 milliwatts. Uh, when I had two LEDs connected like I've got here, um, when I tested it before, I got 7.7 .7 milliamps at the uh, output and 3.75 volts at the output, so that's 28.9 milliwatts. And at the battery for the same test, I got 26.2 milliamps being consumed at 1.28 volts, so that's 33.5 milliwatts. Uh, so that gave me an efficiency, which I worked out by dividing the um, current at the output by the current at the input and multiplying by 100, and I got 86.2% efficiency. Uh, but when I disconnected one of the LEDs, and I only drove one LED, I got uh, 5.6 milliamps uh, and 4.61 volts at the output, which is 25.8 milliwatts. And at the input for that test, I got 21.1 milliamps and 1.28 volts, which was 27 milli milliwatts. Uh, so when I worked out using the, the same um, process, 25.8 divided by 27 times 100, I got 95.5% efficiency. Uh, so it's actually quite good as a boost converter, but the circuit doesn't have uh, voltage control or anything like that. So um, I'd, its uses, I don't know, it might be useful for some things and, and maybe it'd be uh, quite easy to put voltage control in there. I wouldn't mind doing that because it's such a simple circuit with so few components and so cheap to make that I could actually use it in some of my circuits. Uh, but that's the update and uh, I'm very pleased with the, the output of the second project.